Welcome to episode 26 of the reading of Michael McCoy's Garden, 23rd of October, 1998. I sowed the main lawn on Saturday. Very few steps in the making of the garden have given me so much pleasure. Although it's only about 15 metres by 3 metres, it's incredible what a difference a piece of even textured green lawn can make to a garden. All landscapers will bear witness to the huge satisfaction to be had from laying instant turf and watching a garden being transformed in a matter of hours. The owner of an exceptional garden not far from us gave his wife, who was heartily sick of seeing the garden half constructed, a surprise instant lawn for her birthday. The kids kept her entertained with breakfast in bed and a whole lot of other impromptu distractions while this fellow and a friend frantically laid the lawn. She was eventually allowed out of bed to find the garden completely transformed. It was but a box of seed for me. Only a few hours later, I kept thinking I could get, detect a green fuzz over the area. Five days later, there's still nothing showing, so I guess I must have been imagining it. 6th of November, 1998. The chai flowers are simply covered in Australian painted lady butterflies today. Their tan colouring looks quite good with the mauve. To see them all flocking around put me in mind of the biggest group of butterflies I ever saw, all sucking or chewing away furiously at a huge elephant poo on the banks of the Zambezi in Zimbabwe. What appealed to them, I wonder? I'm not sure if I were a butterfly. I'd, I'm sorry, I'm sure... If I were a butterfly, I'd stick to the mo flowers for preference, but you can never really put yourself in someone else's shoes. What on earth am I going to plant underneath the trees at the back of this garden, the woodland, that can look any good in its first season? My intention was to have a simple matrix of plants that have a long season within which all the special things can emerge in spring, then be lost amongst them for the rest of the year. I wanted something fairly bold and sowed seeds of Tilichia speciosa last year in the hope of having masses of it. It isn't a first class plant, but has big bold leaves, then flowers late, almost always an advantage, with yellow daisy flowers. It would have been perfect, but it seems that one seedling stuck its head up and out of its seed coat, didn't like the prospect, warned all the others and promptly died. I don't have a single plant and can't buy them anywhere. What I have in mind is really nothing like a woodland at all. True woodland would probably be carpeted with a single species in spring, as are bluebell woods, or if the wood were less dense in canopy, grasses with a very simple wildflower content. The idea of a deciduous wood is so foreign to an Australian that I'd been trying to garden in deciduous shady conditions for several years and making a total hash of it before I stumbled on the obvious point that most plants that grow in these conditions are early flowerers. Their season needs to be early in order to virtually complete their annual life cycle before the canopy of trees overhead has closed in, leaving them in the dark. The floral emphasis of any such woodland, real or contrived, is likely to be in spring, and the best one can hope for after that is a really good carpet of foliage. And even this is only achievable in reasonably light shade. Eventually, I sorted out that what I was really after was more like a naturalistic, shady, border-type planting. You know, the sort of thing. Hostas, hellebores, epimediums, creating a tapestry of foliages. In short, nothing like any real woodland you'll ever see in your life, and very difficult to achieve. It looks like I'll be depending heavily on rosettes of foxgloves and variegated honesty for this year, but neither of them is very exciting. I've planted several geranium matarensi for their unbeatable domes of divided foliage, but I couldn't get hold of enough, and I expect they'll hate my heavy frosts anyway. But I need something for this season, and I'm hoping not to have to revert to impatience. This garden is already going to be heavily dependent on annuals, and there is something incongruous and unconvincing about low, little flowering annuals in woodland planting. If you could get really big ones, that would be another thing. Maybe the tall Nicotiana sylvestris would do the trick if I can get it to flower before the cold sets in. 14th of November, 1998. This morning dawned with a cloudless sky following two and a half days of beautiful, 
deep soaking rain. Before that, it hadn't rained for ages, and most towns in the area are on water restrictions. The ground in many parts was dusty dry. The situation hadn't become serious here, but I turned on a sprinkler in the front garden for the first time, just a day or two before the rain, thinking it might be just getting just dry enough to start affecting the height that the perennials will reach this summer. Then the rain started and I could feel my whole body relax. My shoulders sag comfortably in response. I just wanted to sit and watch it. Within 24 hours, I believe I could see a visible expansion in some plants like the young dahlias. It kept falling. It fell quite hard at times, but not until it had wet the ground sufficiently deeply for it to penetrate. It was still falling last night as I went to bed, but this morning it's all clear skies and sunshine. Perfect, absolutely perfect growing weather.